The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the good news from God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. As he was walking along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net in the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you into fishers of men. And once they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in their boat, mending their nets. He called them at once, and leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the man he employed, they went after him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, all three readings of today speaks about, speaks of the urgency of conversion, the importance of repentance. The urgency of conversion and the importance of repentance. Jesus says in today's gospel, repent and believe the good news. And this re re repentance is basically to call us to reform ourselves, to change, to transform, to make anew our lives. And if you look at your lives from the day you were born, probably, as I said earlier, probably 10 years onwards when we are more aware of things, right up to this day, how much have I changed? Not intellectually, not physically, not emotionally even or psychologically in my spiritual realm when you are in the church one hour only one hour we talk about god and how about the rest of the year rest of the day rest of the week am i imbibed even in the thoughts of god and so <coughs> he's calling us to repentance and repentance means conversion of heart and this can only come about if you have humility. You see, when I don't have humility, I will not be able to understand and recognize the sins that I have. And humility is the ability to give up my pride, to give up my pride and retain my dignity. And humility is having the capacity to say sorry to someone, to be able to say sorry. When I don't have humility, I often readily blame others. I say, you are wrong, you are wrong, you are wrong, you are wrong. And most of the time I feel that I am right. And humility has the capacity to say sorry because I recognize my imperfections, my limitations. Otherwise, I will always want to blame other people. And in the first reading, the city of Nineveh, the people were all terrible people. And Jonah went into that city and he started preaching. And there was a great conversion of heart. And they manifested their conversion by putting on sackcloth. How about the people of the city of Saramban. If I were to ask of you, how much of conversion have taken place in me? The people of Nineveh showed that by putting on sackcloth. Of course, obviously, we are not going to do that. But you ask yourself, every one of us, how much have I changed spiritually? How much have I come closer to God? In the new year, it's already 20 days past. How have I been in this new year? That is what the Lord is asking us. God changed his mind when Nineveh, the people of Nineveh changed. When they got converted, 
God changed his mind and blessed them instead, instead of putting them through calamities. You see, when you have, when you have no conversion, you face a lot of calamities of all kind. And the, and the Satan, the devil, will attack you so readily and easily. That is why some of us are wallowing in this problem of the evil one, restlessness, troubles, uncomfortable, lack of peace, always thinking's negative. When I am converted, I have this readiness to recognize the blessing of God. Otherwise, I will be covered with all kind of troubles and I will be in some form of calamity, not just the natural disasters, but my own life, my own family. And what has to happen? A conversion has to be very sincere, has to be a genuine conversion. <coughs> Somebody called me and spoke to me about this auntie and niece were having a conversation. So the auntie and niece were having a conversation about the sacrament of reconciliation, about conf confessions. So the auntie said, hey, you must go for confession. I go for confession. You know, young people, very few today go for confessions. And so this girl said, auntie, why do you go for confession? Because I sin, la. Then why you go again? Because I sin again. Then why do you need confession? Because I commit sin, that's why. I said, is that the reason you go for confession? I know I'm going to sin, so I go for confession. Confession, you go to confession because I am determined not to sin again. And when I am determined, when I'm making effort, the grace of God abounds. But when I continue to sin, the, the grace of God diminishes in me and the power of God is weakened inside me. And so I go back to confession. And so confession gives you the grace. And that is the reason we go to confession. Not so much not to sin again, but I'm determined not to do the sins that I've confessed. Now, this is what the Lord is calling us today to genuine repentance. And you know, he says to the, to the apostles, Paul and, uh, not Paul, Simon and Andrew and the others, follow me. If God calls you, follow me. He's not asking you to become priests or nuns. He's calling you to a heart of conversion, to change ourselves. And you know, do we have a sincere conversion? There was this man who was uh, having a party at night one evening. And then, uh, as he, he was drinking quite a bit, and then he had a misunderstanding with his wife. So he had a misunderstanding, and then a friend of him saw this happening, he walked out of the house. And then, he scolded his children, fired them. And he was so drunk that all this has happened, and he went to bed that night. Next morning when he got up, Oh, you, I need to repent, la. I need to make a change. So he got converted. And so he went there and he looked at all the beer bottles arranged there. Five, six bottles. He went and took the first bottle, empty bottle. You are the cause of my argument with my wife. He got very angry with the bottle and he broke the bottle. And then he went to the second one. You are the cause, you know, of me scolding my children. Smash the second bottle. The third bottle, you are the cause of us letting my friend go off the house, go out of the house yesterday earlier. Broke the third one. Went to the fourth one, he said, and you made me lose my job. Broke the fourth bottle. When he went to the fifth bottle, the bottle was full. So he told the bottle, you sit aside. You are saved. You did not cause the trouble. So you be up, set apart. So he set aside that bottle. And so what happens? This whole scenario, this whole episode will be repeated. So we are like that sometimes. We repeat what we do. And that is not conversion. And so he's asking us to come and be renewed in him. So dear sisters and brothers, we are called to a renewal. You know, we come to church week after week and why are we in the church, I ask myself. We come, fulfill a duty, fulfill an obligation, and I go back home, 
and the same old rut begins from Monday to Sunday morning I come to church again and it starts again no there is much more to a Christian that much more that you can experience truly 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 experience when you allow him to come into you and first John chapter 1 verse 6 tells us if we say we have fellowship with him with God while we walk in darkness we lie and do not practice the truth I repeat first John chapter 1 verse 6 if we say we live in fellowship with God while we walk in darkness we lie and do not practice the truth so ask yourselves dear sisters and brothers if you are really living in the truth or we live in darkness but we come to church just to tickle our senses our emotions a little bit and I go back home pray for this grace that I want to have a greater intimacy greater connectedness with God otherwise our life will not be the same or rather will be the same as it has been the second reading the second reading tells us if you have a wife live as if you don't have a wife so are you going to leave your wife if you got money live as if you have no money the second reading is telling us the urgency of conversion you know what he's telling us time is running out now some of us will say oh I'm only 30 years old ah, I got a lot of things to do I don't worry but he's reminding us time is running out this world has existed for billions of years but you and I only live 70 80 for those who are strong hundred that's all within this span of life which half of us have finished the first part of our life and so let us not wait the urgency to conversion is so imminent so necessary he says look into yourself and make a change I know young people are very careless very carefree if you are aware if you make the change today you will be shining stars before the elders but most of us choose to be what others are in the world just pray pray for this grace to make a change for his open arms waiting for us to love us continuously amen